Well, the crisis at the U.S. southern border continues. The disaster is unfolding right before our eyes, but it seems like independent journalists are shining a light in dark places. It could, resulting, could be resulting in some major shifts right now among the deep state players in all of this. So all of this is facilitated. All of this is being orchestrated to bring illegal immigrants into the United States, to undermine the United States, and it's being done with the help of the U.S. government being funded and supported by the U.S. government. Uh, two great journalists who, of course, have been exposing what's been going on at Darien Gap and Vander Steel, Michael Yan, join us now with some really big news on one of the camps and one of the locations down in the Darien Gap. You guys have been shining a light on this, getting international attention to these camps, and we've been featuring it here on the show because of your reporting. And suddenly now there's a mysterious fire and documents are going missing and government's panicking, we think. Can you guys break this down? What exactly has been happening in Panama that our audience needs to know about? Go ahead, Ann. Uh, so, Clayton, very simply, uh, Michael Yan has been leading an expedition down the Daring Gap for several years now. He focused in on it right after the election. But more recently, I've been joining him. As a matter of fact, we joined together during Operation Burning Edge, we kicked it off and we were on your show uh, when we were stumbling across new information with respect to missing children out of the NGOs that we were focusing in on in Texas. Well, that's taken us back to Darien because the majority of the state sponsors of terror are moving these, quote, migrants, and they're not, that's an invasion army, through the Darien Gap, up through Central America. This is funded by the American taxpayer through the United Nations Immigration uh, organization, non-governmental organization of choice known as IOM, the International Organization for Migration, as well as other NGOs like HIAS, Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. We focused closely in on HIAS when we visited one camp called San Vicente, China call, uh, Michael calls it China Camp. A lot of Chinese uh, immigrants, if you will, migrants or Invasion, uh, invasion army come through there, and they're mostly men of military age. You can speak to the people down there. They will tell you that's what they see. That's what we saw. Uh, after going down there with Epoch Times, Laura Loomer, myself, Mara Macy, who's running for Congress, probably one of the only honest brokers of a congressional opportunity uh, who's willing to report on this, we all witnessed it, saw some very suspicious people. One week later, Highest locked their Twitter account. They took their sign down that was outside San Vicente camp. And then the camp mysteriously was torched, specifically the offices that have the immigration records of who have processed through that camp on their way to the United States, in addition to the agents, the immigration agents, and in addition to the centerfront agents. So everything was wiped out, which is very, very suspicious, considering this was less than a week after us being there. That was just last Friday, the fire, yeah. by the way. The camp itself wasn't completely burned down. They targeted those records. And Centerfront actually announced, what's today? Yeah, they announced yesterday that they're doing a special investigation because they see that they believe, Centerfront basically is the Panamanian sort of border police slash almost like an army, but it's not actually an army. And they're very professional, super fit, very, I deal with them all the time. And three of them were badly hurt, by the way, in this riot. It looks like what happened was there was agent provocateurs kicked off this big riot. Uh, 45 people, about 250 people apparently were involved. 45 were arrested or being deported now. And, uh, but they specifically targeted those records. So most of the camp was not touched at all, but those buildings burned. Now, actually, what I'm curious about, this is just me thinking out loud. I have no evidence to support this, but there's multiple people that would have interest in capturing those records. And it would be very easy to do that. I'm very familiar with that camp and Anne's very, very familiar. We've been there many, many times. It's very easy. If you started a ruckus like this, you could easily capture those records because they did it at nighttime, escape into the nighttime and be gone with them. And then, you know, of course, make the fire looking like the records were destroyed because the highest, of course, would want to do this. Venezuelans may want to do it. Chinese Communist Party uses that camp as an infiltration camp. There's a lot of people that would have the motive to do this and the means. So I guess I will follow up with that then, Michael. What do you? Who do you think would want these records? What's the purpose of getting these immigrant records? These are people being processed here, as Ann pointed out. So who would have the motive? Why? Why would they have the motivation to get these records? Wouldn't they already? Wouldn't they already know that these individuals are flowing through here? They're facilitating it, after all. Let me take that just yeah. for a moment. I, I think there's multiple, like the U.S. government, as an example. It's clear. I mean, we've been very clear. This is a terror camp. 
I mean, this is the most in intense terrorist camp you've ever seen. It's a flow. It's more like a bus station, right? So even the United States government or the United Nations, what are they? World Economic Forum, Chinese Communist Party. Uh, it, it, let's say the U.S. government. They have a vested interest in destroying those records or capturing those records because they don't want to see that Americans have flown flowed through there. Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas was at that camp on April 18th, 2022. I was physically present. I waited for four days. And he landed in four Blackhawks and he was in the camp bringing 18 million more dollars to the camp that time to expand it. So he's physically been, been there. They published their own photos from their public affairs, the Department of Homeland Security. And then, of course, I've published uh, images and video from that day as well. So that's one motivated partner, the United States getting rid of the records so that, you know, when they start shooting up synagogues and golf courses down here in Florida, that people aren't saying, hey, and others would, of course, be the Chinese Communist Party. So, so the idea is who, who, who we want to cover our path. Yeah. We want to cover Sorry? our path here. We want to, these terrorists yeah, are in the United or, States, the, the tens of thousands of terrorists that are in the United States now, and we taxpayers have been paying for it. So we want to destroy the paper trail. Is that the case, Anne? Yeah, absolutely. And let's be really clear. When Michael and I were uh, in a car last week driving in towards Tennessee, we were we received a phone call from somebody inside the military who um, understand who is a flight surgeon who understands and explains very clearly that the immigrants I'm going to use air quotes because they're not immigrants. OK, these invaders coming across our border are separated. They're set. The military is setting up what's called MEPS stations along the border at border checkpoints, border security work, Customs and Border Protection have already temporary facilities for processing. One migrant, immigrant, invader will be sent in one direction and another will be sent towards a MEPS facility for the military. Why are they doing this? They're already selecting immigrants, migrants, invaders to be processed for a pathway to citizenship inside our military, not too dissimilar to what they're doing in California and Chicago and other cities where they're saying, hey, join us on law enforcement and we'll give you a pathway to citizenship, a gun, a badge, a job and a card so that you can legally earn money. Now you have invaders, an army with guns, just like President Obama wanted to have. He wanted to have his own private army. They are importing it. The United Nations is collaborating. Again, we are the biggest funders of the UN through their NGO partners and importing these people from state sponsors of terror. And then you have a camp, which is a known camp where multiple Chinese of military aged men are being processed, mysteriously have a fire. Now you have to also factor in that these uh, illegal invaders are also getting debit cards for 2,200 bucks a month from again, the US taxpayer. That being said, we know we're going into another banking collapse. It's going to be another cascading event of regional bank failures because the Fed is cutting off the spigot on Monday the 11th. When that happens, you have to ask yourself, how much longer will these, uh, these invaders be allowed to have their EBT cards refilled every month? When you're cut off from your bank uh, and, and we're cut off from our bank, what do you think is going to happen to the illegals when they're cut off from their funds and you can't put food on the table? This is the this is the table that is being set for a full blown civil war in this country that is going to get very, very bloody. And again, it's all being funded by the taxpayer who is blindly walking themselves to the gallows by allowing the federal government to fund the United Nations. I just spoke with uh, I just spoke with J.J. Carroll, a former Customs and Border Protection uh, agent for 24 years. Um, yeah, supervisor and said that you he's, need to get the, he's a serious person serious great guy yeah amazing and he said you know that he used to get within a year five special interest individuals these are people who are on an fbi list these are and out of the hundreds that they would arrest they would arrest hundreds on a daily basis and send them back five a year now 80,000 are in the United States. These are people that the United States recognizes as terrorists or ties to terrorism, and they're coming from all sorts of different countries and entry points in the United States. This is no joke, and we are witnessing it right now through these camps. So when you see this fire, this camp is somewhat destroyed. This camp, this highest camp, uh, China camp, as you, you call it, Michael, that, that's not the end of it, right? It's Now it's mutated. Where is it? Where is this mutating towards out of that one particular spot? Are you seeing other spots popping up like a hydra where these people are being processed and facilitated? By the way, in the MEPS stations, everybody who's been in the military knows what that is. That's your military in processing, right? Where they go and do the uh, 
physicals and, you know, take your oath and that sort of thing. So, but that, so yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is a lot of the people that would be coming through the dairy now are actually flying in from Colombia or they're flying in from Guatemala or they're coming across the Canadian border. There was just a big run of people that came in here to Florida. They came up on, what was that? Jupiter, uh, uh Jupiter beach, yeah. Jupiter beach. Uh, they're Many constantly boats. doing that. Right. But they're also expanding their existing camps like we witnessed down in uh, in the dairy in Baja Chiquito. They're expanding Baja Chiquito camp, Lajas Blancas. They're putting in water treatment facilities, which is really ironic because so many children were really sick that day we were there. Why? Because they had a, a pipe running down into uh, the river where they were intaking water they were supposedly treating, but that pipe was also running right next to a waste pipe. So they were pumping waste into the river and they were sucking it right back up and supposedly processing it, and children were getting serious dysentery. So, I mean, this is, again, this is, you see these NGOs with their signs and their booths all throughout these camps next to the American flags plastered right next to them, but you never see people in the booths themselves. So they get the billions of dollars to put up a sign saying, we're here, Doctors Without Morals, we're here, Red Cross, we're here, United Nations, but there's nobody there. The lights are on and nobody's home. It is disgusting the way they treat these people. It is anything but humanitarian at all. What are you hearing from the CBP? What are you hearing from the, the folks that work for the federal government that are trying to stop this? I mean, these are great people. These are hardworking people. Uh, what I'm hearing on my side is their hands are tied. I mean, they're literally having to release these individuals and they're not being arrested. They, they arrest them. They turn around and release them right back into the system right now, into the United States, terrorists into the United States. Border Patrol needs to, a lot, there's a lot of patriots in Border Patrol. But there's a lot of them. We're down on the border a lot. I've been I've been all the way from Bajo Chiquito to San Diego. I've been across the entire border. A lot of that on the Mexican side and on the entire U.S. side. And I see Border Patrol people, very serious patriots and others are constantly. I'm just doing my job, sir. Like, where have we heard that from? They, they actually use those words constantly. I'm just doing my job. I'm doing my job. I got to get my pension. The bottom line is. It's treason if you're helping to load those buses. Bottom line, you have to make a choice. Are you going to commit treason just doing your job or are you going to not just do your job? You have a moral obligation to stop aiding the invasion of the United States. If you're loading the buses, you are committing treason. You're not just doing your job. You're committing treason. It's time to stop just doing your job. What happened? I, where, where are the men? Where are the people that are going to get down there and stop this? You know, where? Yeah, I'm we looking have. at two right here. I'm I know. Looking at two right here. I, I mean, uh, yeah. you, you, know, you know, we need these men. We need these men who you know, drive these pickup trucks who care about their country. These American patriots to say enough is enough. Get down here. We saw, you know, trucker convoy to get down there. And that sort of I don't know what's going on with that. But we need people. If the federal government won't do it, this is an invasion. We are watching the country collapse right in front of our eyes. That's it, Clayton. You hit the nail on the head. And thank you for bringing that segue up because there are groups, there are lots of freedom groups out there that are asking these questions and they're organizing. We just were in Tennessee. We spoke to some there. I speak to these people all over the country. And before people freak out when I use the word militia, it's in the Second Amendment. It's part of our Constitution. Militia is not the word that the FBI would have you mischaracterize with a bunch of men, tactical gear and face paint running around shooting ARs off in the middle of the night. That's not a militia. A well-regulated militia is an organized group of private of citizens that are saying hey I'm defending my home my state or my county and my country and right now we need to call on the militia and get the militia organized and there's organizations out there like tacticalcivics.com that are constitutionally Christian based groups that have over 1600 counties covered in our country already they need another 1500 and we're off to the races we have every county covered in this country where people are going to be trained on what it means to defend your homestead defend your your city your county etc this is critical that we're at that point because guess what every state is a border state and they have infiltrated thanks to governors like governor greg abbott a wef puppet who has seven pages on the wef site de dedicated to him the world economic forum they've bust these illegal invasion army all throughout our country and by doing the bidding of the World Economic Forum and you know bringing this army inside everywhere and the Customs and Border Protection agents stopping cars along the border and asking if you're a citizen, but not stopping trucks and looking inside the trucks to see if they're carrying nuclear, biological, chemical weapons or, or other weapons, cash or uniforms to the Chinese army that General Flynn has said, we have at least seven divisions of military-aged Chinese in this country right now. Without doing the work that we need to be doing, 
We are just allowing ourselves to be lambs to the slaughter, but the people have to recognize that cavalry isn't coming. We have a woke military leadership. The Customs and Border Protection agents are just doing their job. They're following unlawful orders. We, the people, have to stand up and go, guess what? Our government is not of, by, and for us, Clayton. We need to stand up. It's not about shooting our government. It's about defending our country and our family and our God-given rights. And people need to recognize that, and they need to act accordingly. It's called civic duty. Hmm, hallelujah. Michael, anything to add to that? I mean, you're, I'm sure you're talking to a lot of patriots that are just fed up. And do they feel like a one-man army sometimes? There's millions of us. There's millions of us. And, you know, the only cult that people never see is the cult that they're in, right? There's a cult. There's a just doing your job cult almost. It's sort of a made a cult. I mean, it's not really a cult. It's just a tendency, let's say. You know, people in, uh, they're basically gears in a clock and they don't even know what time it is. You know, they're just doing their job. They're just, their job is to be a gear and turn to the right or whatever. And so they're invading their own country. And, uh, and, People need to stand up and start resisting. There's ways that everybody can resist. Think it up and do it. Execute, yeah, and hopefully right? we can all come together not- in this. You know, we on a Tuesday night show, we highlighted how there's a long history of the United States Army at the U.S. southern border going back to Andrew Jackson and calling for this. You know, and the left, the liberals made fun of Donald Trump for him saying that this was his favorite president. And, uh, and yeah, we had a long history of American troops at the U.S. southern border up until World War II, until we had to go fight Nazis. Um, and so we need to do this again. We need to get people organized and get down there to the southern border. The United States government's not doing it. The Biden administration's not doing it. And our country is being overrun. I'll get you out of here on this, guys. We talk about CBP all the time. We talk about what's happening at that moment or down in the Darien Gap. But we're, there's not been a lot of discussions about ICE. And there's not been a lot of discussions about now that they're in the United States, what is that group doing to go out and make these arrests? Because as J.J. Carroll points out, you were arresting people at the border, turning them around. So they were getting almost to a zero per day influx where they were arresting them at the border and sending them back. And then ICE under Donald Trump was also making thousands of arrests on a regular basis. So we were actually creating a negative flow, negative flow with all of the arrests that ICE was able to do. What's going on with that right now? Zero. I don't see anything going on. We're being invaded everywhere we look. Uh, we're, we haven't even, we're not even defending ourselves. Uh, ICE, under the direction of Tom Homan, when Tom Homan step back, steps back into that role under President Trump, God willing that we can get him back in the office, has promised me personally, and I know he said it publicly, but personally in conversations, that he will deport every single last one of these illegal invaders in the country. And it's going to take a yeoman's effort. It's going to be federal, it's going to be state, it's going to be county, and it's going to be people. We're going to be working together, and then we will have to have sheriffs who will deputize people in the, in the county to help round these people up. Look, they know where they are. They have the ATM cards where they're sending them money. They can track their cell phones. And it's going to take people just saying, hey, I know there's a busload of migrants living in this apartment complex, and they're collecting their 2200 bucks a month, each one of them, while they're living for free, three hots and a cot, getting health and medical and education. We know where they are. People can start to ask their county commissioners, hey, do we have any illegal migrants living in this country right now? I want to know where they are. Where are they in my county? And then we stand outside and we tell them, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Illegal Invader, you shouldn't probably come outside because climate change. It's too dangerous. We'll make sure that the food somehow gets to you, <laughs> but we're not going to let you out anymore. It's just far too dangerous based on climate change. Greta Thunberg told me that, and the UN backs me up. I mean, we have to turn this whole thing around on them, Clayton, and start using their words against them because we've allowed them to bully us into the point where we have submitted to an invasion of our country, and we have to just say no. Well, Michael, you I know what they're going to say. Yeah, I do not submit. I do not comply. I mean, that's the the shirts that we sell on our website. I mean, yes. I, I, you know, I know how they're going to paint us. Here's what they're going to do, and mark my words, this is exactly how the media is going to frame us and paint us. So we all need to be prepared. Everyone watching right now, this is what's going to happen. And Michael, myself, we're going to start calling out where these illegal aliens, these terrorists are holed up in different buildings and so forth. We're going to start calling attention to it when this election is done for these individuals to be rounded up and taken back to their countries and get our country back. And what they're going to start to do, MSNBC, the mainstream media, they're going to start calling us, painting us as xenophobes, that this is what the left is doing, Gestapo tactics. You're going to see SWAT team raids to get these individuals out of the United States. And we have to just be strong about it. 
And we have to say, no, we're not going to stand for that. You're not going to label us that. We're taking our country back. And you can call us every name in the book. You can say that, you know, Trump is like a Gestapo army now going out, rounding up all of these illegals. And we have to be strong and we have to remember that this is going to be the strategy they're going to use. I mark my words. I can already see Rachel Maddow's show okay. doing this, you know. But their, their accusations no longer work. We took their magic wand and calling us racist and anti-Semites and everything under the sun. We broke it and we threw it into the fireplace. It doesn't work anymore. That's right. I mean, it yeah. just doesn't work. Go ahead and call me whatever. I laugh. Yeah. I laugh at them. In fact, they just they dismissed themselves by making these accusations. Yeah. They're 100%. not serious people. Well, you guys are serious people, and we're thrilled to have you guys on the show doing the, the amazing work that you're doing, shedding a light on this story. And we hope that now the rise of independent media and what we're able to do here, what you guys are able to do is shining a light on this. And I, you're seeing it on Super Tuesday vote results. You're seeing a groundswell right now. And I hope that we can take our country back um, and you guys leading the charge with this. And Michael, great to see both of you. Thank you guys so much and continue the, uh, continue the amazing fight. Thanks, Thank you, Clayton. Clayton. Thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.